Hello and welcome to this video on the grammar of the lambda calculus. You may have seen whatever this nightmarish thing is and we're going to try and explain what this means uh, and how to read it and how to understand grammars that look like this. So in the last video we looked at the lambda calculus, you can go back and watch that. We talked of a few different building blocks that we're building our lambda calculus out of. We talked about variables, we talked about function application, we talked about function abstraction. We also talked about literals, but I'm going to leave them out here. Um, you can kind of imagine they, they roll up into, into variables. And so you might say, huh, well, you know, each of those building blocks corresponds to a line here or, you know, a production rule here, but I'm still confused how I read this. So let's kind of go through in the different parts. So we're going to say, well, the lambda calculus is a way to define expressions. So that's what our E is. Our E is an, an expression. I'm going to say E is equal to, or is produced by, or is generated from, or is defined as, this is what this equal symbol is kind of trying to say, um, either a variable x. This could also not necessarily be the literal letter x. It could be a y or a z or an odd or a um, hello um, or whatever. Uh, you want it to be, but it's a variable. We're, we're talking about a variable, so you could say, well, x it's on its own is a valid lambda expression. Or, and that's what this, this pipe means, um, this or, it could be two expressions, e1 and e2, and these little substrips 1 and 2 are just useful so we can refer to it later and we can we can understand how things might map when we add, add rules on top. But they're really the same e as the, the e expression. So we're going to say these can be two expressions just as long as you have them after each other. That is function application. Another common way that you might see these written is m and n, often in capitals, which represent the two different lambda expressions that are being applied. And then the third type of expression we looked at is or it can be a function abstraction. That's where we have the kind of backslash, the parameter, arrow, and then the function body, which is another expression, e. And that e, again, is, is referencing back to it can be another expression. You might see this written in slightly different ways. Uh, so for example, you might see it as colon colon equals. Um, this is often from Bacchus normal form or BNF. Uh, you'll see this kind of syntax written. You might also see it on one line uh, where the kind of or pipe symbols have been put between them. And you also might see it as an arrow uh, showing how to, to generate these. And so this is related to grammars and I'll also post a uh, link to a YouTube video in the description below where you can have a look at some other explanations of how grammars work and how they're written and how they can generate um, valid strings. So let's have a look at how we can use this grammar to generate some kind of valid lambda expression. So let's start with E because we want a valid lambda expression. So we're going to start with E for expression. We're going to choose a rule. So let's say we choose the application rule so that E is equal to E1, E2. So that makes our E become two E's because um, that's our first one, E1, and our second one, E2. Let's take the, the first one and we say, okay, let's how, how do we expand this? How can we, what rule can we use to expand this? Well, let's say we want to use the function abstraction rule. That's uh, E equals backslash X arrow E. And so we're gonna pop that in. And this backslash X, it could be a different parameter. Uh, it could be called Y or Z, uh, that's fine. But the idea is we're putting in a function abstraction. I've also just put in brackets in here just to make it a bit clearer on, on exactly what is happening because otherwise it can be confusing how we've made this. And then let's pick another one. So let's say the E for the function body. Well, let's let's use the E as a variable rule. So here we can say, well, E is X. And again, this could be Y or Z. And in fact, let's do actually use Y or Z now. So let's replace that last E with a, with a Y. So now we have a valid lambda expression. We can't expand it anymore because we don't have any more E's as expressions in there to expand. And now that is a, a ready to go lambda expression where it's basically just an identity function and a y, actually quite similar to our identity function and the three example from earlier. Hopefully that's given you some idea of how the grammar works, how it relates to the lambda expressions we've seen and how it relates to those building blocks that we've been using to build up our expressions. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.